Hello, dear chess friends. My name is Gisbert Jacobi, and my guest today is Grandmaster Dr. Carsten Müller. And he liked proudly to present you to you the new chess base, Mega Base 2017, especially the historical part. You have done a lot of work on the historical games and information? Indeed. <laughs> I hope so. Show us. First question is how many games? How many new games? How many new games? Uh, no. In total we have eight. We have in in the historical part of the new mega base, we have in total, let's say, 75,000 games. Almost. Uh, al almost together. And uh, the new, the part of the new games is a little bit more than 5,000. And the next question is how many annotated games? This is maybe the more important uh, question. Definitely. We can here press the this button f to sort by annotated games indeed and you can scroll down and you see there are a lot of oh yeah annotated games and how not many of them are new not all are new not all are new annotated but uh, all together we have now um, i have figured this out exactly we have now six thousand 172 annotate, good an annotated games and in the Mega 2016 we had 3,500. This so almost doubled. Not really, but 2,600 <laughs> are new. Yeah? So and then for for annotations or for we can even look in the database for not only for annotated games, we, c we have even texts, database text for this, we have to list, to sort, to filter the list. We can press here, filter list, and then here we can activate text. With the search mask, and now we search for text. Oh, yeah, this. Is you see, this is all text. Looks very rich in and content. And indeed, we have a lot of text. Uh, and even there is a, is a, is a plus of a uh, good plus of the new text is uh, earlier we had 127 and now we have two th 216. You really did a lot of work as I can see. No, I, I made a mistake. 114 before now 200, 219. So and you also improved the editing of the material and you added the de exact dates. Ah. You can see this here. Yeah. Very good. Ma maybe we, we can. I can give you one example. When we go to uh, tournaments, we can we can uh, now search under tournaments for matches. This is. Yeah, in the old days there were, I guess, ma many more matches than in the modern times. Uh, the, the, the old uh, form was not a, there was not a written match. There was, was on, you could only read Amsterdam M for match. No? And now you see match, Kiris against Uwe, the result. And when it was played, uh, we have a lot of exact uh, data in, in, the, in, in, the, in the files. Yeah, really a big improvement over the old megabase. So we s let's. I give you an example of of text. Oh yeah, this is in the this played in England. This yeah? is a tournament. This is a tournament uh, report about uh, the Yorkshire Chess Association in the year 1841 and this uh, this text is copied from the uh, chess players um, chronicle chronicle 
and this is a very very in, in, in very very yeah intensive uh, report very deep report you can read a lot and get new information there's something for historians and um, going back to the to our base the question is where have we especially new new games and uh, for the English people maybe it's interesting when we search for British then we see the British Chess Federation the British Congress the, or the Congress of the British Chess Federation we have a, a bright f feature of this nearly every every championship or nearly every every congress is here covered and and even before we have the chess federation was founded in 1904 and even the time before we have the british chess association and even there we have a lot of uh, tournaments no? and for the english people i will tell give you one nice example what i especially like here you see the title Souvenir of the Bristol Chess Club. These are games played in, in the Bristol Chess Club in the 40s of the 19th century. There's a book by uh, Leah Williams. And you entered the games from the book. And, uh, and I, I analyzed them all. <laughs> yeah. So this is, uh, there are, I think, and I remember correctly, 72, 72 games, yeah? and uh, amazing. And this is interesting. So, I like to show you one example from this Bristol tournament. So, let's see this this game, and you see it's an you see some annotations and at the end we come to some critical points this is the no the stuff uh, the of, of chess base 13 is a critical 14 no this is a ah this is the still the in the style of 13 is style of uh, chess base 13 we have a critical position and now i want to show you one innovation of the chess base 14 you can press this symbol insert diagram and oh, yeah. at this place now you have you can insert very quickly very very easily a good diagram yeah? and now for the chess friends we have finally we have <laughs> one small chess problem White's last move was rook e1 threatening rook e7 with a winning attack and black has to do something special. He has to look, I think, for a forcing move, otherwise he will be by himself made it. No? Yeah, defensive moves don't look promising. Black must do something radical. Even rook e6 maybe is threatening. Other than the knight is protecting e6 for the moment. No, when, the, when he's... Ah, uh, when, uh, when the knight. He's, when he's uh, <coughs> trying to, to protect yeah. by, by knight c6. Yeah. Uh, and then to, so, um, and the only... Yeah, the only piece that can give check uh, is uh, the rook. The only forcing move I see is by the rook. Ah. And a new feature of chess base 14. We see all the moves where the rook can go. And there's only one with the green color and the others are red. Red is not no good, not no good squares, but the green one is good. <laughs> <laughs> so. Rook f2 is the good move for black. The only non-losing move, probably. Mm. And now we have, we have a, again a critical move even here. We can press here, insert diagram. This is a nice play. I like to do this, <laughs> to insert <laughs> diagrams. <laughs> and uh, in, in this position, black missed a win. You, you know the game, I think. 
Uh, but this is not so easy. The natural first candidate is knight takes c2, but then white can take the f3 pawn, so it might be better to... Yeah, and this this is uh, the, the the game fo mm -hmm. followed this 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 way, yeah. Uh, so and and it, it ended in the draw, but you can avoid as black that the king can take the pawn. But this is zwischenzug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a German zwischenzug. <laughs> Intermediate move, but the German term zwischenzug. And I, I think the English people too. No? Mm -hmm. And you can protect. In a very nice way, the pawn. The pawn, and first. now now you can play knight c two, and uh, now you have a winning position. Yeah. And we have a new. And here we have a new text from the Western Chess Association. Now you went and to the uh, United the States, yeah? And the, t t and the tournament report has exactly dated where the, p the title, where was it played, sources, cross table, and maybe some information about the tournament. Why is it called Western uh, uh, Chess Association? Because I thought, for example, California or Alaska were West and not Minnesota? Yeah, the first association was founded by uh, from the New York, New York State, together with the Pennsylvania, and uh, later there was called a new association in the west of New York ah, State. Ah, okay. So they, 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 they called uh, <laughs> themselves ah. Western Chess Association. Okay. Yeah, we can even have a look to the to the database, and we can. You can search for Western. Ah, okay. And you see... They sometimes even played in New York. <laughs> or Boston. Yeah, later. <laughs> it, it, later, it, this, from, from this Western, later there, it, it's changed to the American Chess Federation. Ah. The American Chess Federation grew, grew out of this uh, Western uh, Chess Association. Yeah? And the start was, we have to go, we can here change. And here are the, the first Western chess associations uh, starts in the 20th century. And later it, beca it became the American Chess Federation. Mm -hmm. And then even then it was played in New York too. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But earlier it was played, in Chi for example, in Chicago, St. Louis, even in, 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 in California, San Francisco, you see. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And even here you see uh, it's not only the city, even the, the US states are here mentioned. Yeah, yeah you really improved okay. uh, the data a lot. So, and you see this is, uh, and uh, we don't maybe, okay, this is, I think this is enough now. One I, example I, maybe, I, one one game from. I can, I've prepared something. Ah, that's and good. And here I prepared from Chief Ed Edward Lasker, mm -hmm. born German, he, with the name Eduard. Uh -huh. <laughs> he came, uh, he left Germany before the, just before the, the world was one started. And no in directly. In 1913, via England, Netherlands, he came to, uh, to, <coughs> to America. Working as engineer, later he founded an own own company, and then he became a rich man, and he was a good engineer, and uh, he was he played a lot of these tournaments in the Western Union. He lived in Chicago, yeah, and he is one 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 um, association congress in Chicago, 1916, oh. and he played a game against Show Showalter. And Showalter had a special name, <laughs> he, uh, and, and he was the Kentucky Chess Lion. And they say he, he had a specially of because he had such a nice hair. Yeah? <laughs> nice pictures, by the way, also. And Edward Lasker is not directly related to Emmanuel Lasker? I, th I don't think so, yeah, yeah. Maybe very, very far, very, very far. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, no no near uh, family contact. So this is an interesting game, even from the opening. Uh, it, ah. Edward Lasker played black, and he These allowed he allowed an, an knight g5, yeah? and the lion <laughs> <laughs> took the chance. <laughs> the lion roared, and he. Uh, This ended in a pawn mm -hmm. advantage for for white, huh? and now we have a uh, now we have a position prepared by black. I, I'm sure black sacrificed uh, a pawn, and I think he got in enough play for the pawn. No? Yeah, very dangerous yeah. compensation. The bishop pair, the initiative, the open lines. Yeah, this looks. And he has passive uh, pieces. Very dangerous. And when he when he's castling shortly, maybe both th the bishops are looking <laughs> to the king. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So it can't be very. So we see it here this position mm -hmm. and now black has to decide how he can come forward after here I already inserted the, the diagram as you see yeah? maybe I can show you when you open this part you see uh, the special symbol for, for diagram when I delete this the diagram oh. disappears and you have again mm -hmm. <laughs> to restore it by pressing this symbol. So, and by playing e4, he can use, he can open the the game and uh, the, the the position. And uh, and this is not even a pawn sacrifice due to the vis a -vis of Black's rook d8 with White's queen. So uh, this looks very very dangerous. Uh, the rook is looking here to the queen. Yes. Yeah. E4, and you see. Yeah. yeah. Now, no question, black <laughs> has the upper hand, yeah? and the white ah. position is very, very dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, and very nice move, queen d8. So, and black finally won this the the open king position, and the good uh, black p uh, pieces made the win not not too difficult yeah so now this is the part one of our of our session we showing you the new mega base and we come we, we see you later in the, in the next parts see you in the next clip